release of emotions, Mr. Spock, is what keeps us healthy. Emotionally healthy, that is. That may be, Doctor. However, I have noted that the healthy release of emotion is frequently very unhealthy for those closest to you. Hey everyone, Jacqueline Howard here. Wow, Spock is not a fan of emotions, like anger. And the same goes for some self-help gurus out there. They're always talking about how anger is toxic, we should rein it in. But I'm not so sure. If Mr. Spock is talking about extreme anger, then he has a point, and I'll share a special technique with you at the end of this video that will help you better manage that kind of anger. But if he's talking about everyday anger, then Spock is full of Anger isn't just healthy, it's essential. If that sounds like an exaggeration, consider this. What if someone waved a magic wand and people could no longer feel or express anger? I asked evolutionary psychologist Dr. Lita Cosmides to tackle that little thought experiment. Would we all be living in endless bliss? No! She says the social networks that keep us connected would totally unravel. Sounds crazy, right? But Dr. Cosmiti says those same neural networks that drive anger also help us fine-tune cooperative relationships, that is, to get along with each other. So when person A expresses anger at person B, person B may respond by apologizing or changing his or her behavior to make things right. And so a troubled relationship gets repaired. And what works between two people works on the societal level too. Without anger, yes, maybe we would have avoided a few wars, riots, even an assassination or two. But would the American Revolution have happened if those colonists never felt outraged? Without anger, would American women have gotten the right to vote? If Rosa Parks hadn't gotten angry on that December day in 1955, would people like me still be riding on the back of the bus? Anger is an interesting emotion. But okay, let's get back to that anger management secret I promised you. It comes from Dr. Redford Williams. He's a neuroscientist and psychologist at Duke University. He says when you're feeling angry, consider these four questions. One, is the situation important? Two, is what you're feeling appropriate? Three, is it modifiable? In other words, is there anything you can do about it? Or is the situation beyond your control? And four, is the action needed to solve the situation worth it? If you're afraid you won't be able to remember those four questions, just use this handy mnemonic, I am worth it. If you answer no to any of those questions, then Dr. Redford says, instead of expressing anger, maybe it's time for a little self-reflection. But if you answer yes to all of them, then go for it. How do you typically cope with anger? Are you more like Mr. Spock or someone who lets it all hang out? Share your thoughts in the comments, live long and prosper, and talk nerdy to me.